podcast day. This is the Knitspire podcast and I am your host Kaniko and thank you for joining me. Welcome back to any returning viewers and welcome to any new viewers. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Today is Friday, February 15th, 2019. I know it's been a couple of weeks and I was supposed to be podcasting every week, but that did not happen because life gets in the way and that's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. It's just how it is. But I did get a mini episode out, which I think is something that might work for me um, when life gets a little too busy or crazy. So I'm not too mad that I didn't get anything recorded between the last episode and now. So anyway, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm actually drinking something today in my I Am A Mermaid mug. I never have a drink with me. I am probably the only podcaster that doesn't ever have a drink of coffee or tea or whatever. Although I do think I had wine in one of my episodes, but I was recording at night. And right now it's 10.30 in the morning, so a little too early for that. It's coffee time! right now. <clears throat> yes, I do drink coffee. I do drink coffee. Um, I drink tea too. Um, yeah, actually a little thing about the tea. I got the David's Tea Advent calendar this year and it has the 24 teas, one for each day of December and it's actually each little packet is good for two cups of tea so you can break it in half. So what I did was I went through every single packet of tea and enjoyed all of them. Now I'm going back through the packets and just making note of the ones I really like because it was time to try different teas for me so I'm kind of learning like what my tea palette is I guess and it's really exciting. I love it and I love the box. I'm looking at it right over there. It's over my stove. <clears throat> I love the box. It's so pretty and wintry so I'll keep it up there for a little while longer and I got a free David's Tea measuring spoon with it which is nice because I'm all about the loose teas now. I'm like I will never go back to tea bags. That's a lie. But I do love the loose tea. Um, so far it seems like the seasonal flavors are the ones I like which is kind of surprising to me. Uh, I'm not a fruity tea kind of person. I think I'm more of like an Earl Grey. I like jasmine teas but I've tried I've branched out a little bit. It's pretty cool. So but I, this is a ha this is um, I do pour over coffee and I get my I grind my coffee beans at Bulk Barn. Um, if you live in Canada, I don't know if it's just in Ontario, you'll know what it is. It's just a, this big bulk food store. So I get to, I get coffee there because again I don't like store brand coffee. <laughs> I'm a little snobby, sorry. Um, and I, this is half like like a, I like bold flavors, so like I like the darkest coffee you can get. So half of it is pumpkin spice, which I didn't even know I liked until this year. Um, and the other half, so I do two scoops, one pumpkin spice and one like fair trade dark roast coffee or something, the darkest that you can get. Anyway, that's my coffee spiel. I never talk about coffee. I drink coffee. <laughs> um, actually, I don't drink it that much, um, but you, I never drink more than one a day and sometimes I don't even drink one a day so I don't have like some crazy addiction or whatever and then sometimes I like to spend exorbitant amounts of money and go to Starbucks and spend $12 on coffee. I don't know. Whatever. Yes, there is Starbucks in Canada. Anyway, this is a knitting podcast, not a coffee podcast. <clears throat> so I want to talk about um, what I've been working on because I don't have Yes, never mind. I do have new stuff in the needle. So it's all whipped right now. I'll put my little coffee over there. Mm, that is good. It's just a coffee kind of day. It is gray and cold. Actually, it's not as cold as it's been. It's a little bit warmer. I think it was three degrees this morning Celsius, so that's not bad. The ice is melting. The snow is melting. Although, I can't kind of like the snow. If it's going to be cold, you might as well see the snow. It was really pretty when it fell. Um, and I don't have to really go many places, so it's not bad. It's winter. It's going to snow. And I live in Canada. It's going to snow. And that's um, one thing I didn't say. I am an American living and knitting in Canada. Yeah. So it's quiet here today. It's nice. Um, so the first whip is still a whip. You're gonna be like, what is wrong with you, girl? What is wrong with you? So I think on that mini episode that I um, made a couple of weekends ago, 
I shared my Raina shawl and I don't think I've made any more progress on it. I still, I only have this much more to bind off. That's it. I mean, I could do it right here. I won't, but I could. Yeah, I did all one side, right? Yeah, all one side and all of the other side. And I only have that much to bind off. That's crazy, right? Like I could have finished that in five minutes. I don't know why. Funny thing, I, I will actually finish this after the, the um, podcast because I want to block it out because obviously it needs to be blocked out. It's just a curly little mess and I want to be able to wear it. <clears throat> Funny thing, if you remember, if you did watch the, uh, the mini episode, I had to switch to a new skein of yarn because I ran out of this, which I knew I would. And I kind of went stash diving and found some old dyed yarn that I had dyed, hand dyed yarn that I dyed myself. And it kind of matched. And I'm actually pretty happy with how it looks. It, I don't even know if you can tell a difference. You kind of can if you really look, but from far away you'd be like, oh, cool, that looks awesome. But I only have, I played yarn chicken badly with this. And for binding off, all I have left is this, that's it. But I was organizing my stash, which I will get to later, and I came across another ball of this yarn. I must have split it, or I think I might have had two skeins, I'm not really sure. <clears throat> and I could have made this a little bit bigger, but oh well, that's okay. So I'm gonna finish this as soon as I get off the podcast after I, after I, when I finish recording the podcast, <clears throat> I will finish this. Sorry. That's that. So I've got made a little bit progress, a little bit of progress on my Nadia socks, which are actually out on test knitting on, on a test knitting. They're being test knit right now. And this is the second one. That's over on Sunday, I believe, and I will be releasing this soon, and my entire Sweet Child of Mine series will be done, tested, and ready to be released, and I'm so excited. I'm not really sure if I'm going to release them all at once or four separate days in a row. I'm not sure if I'm going to put them together in one collection, or I think I'm going to release them all separately and then put them together in the collection, so, you know, you might not like this pattern, but you might like another one. Um, but this is my Nadia sock. This is the only one that I did with a contrasting um, cuff and toe because I forgot to do the heel in contrasting. I got carried away. But that's the back of it. <coughs> I'm sorry. With the little Elsa braid that Nadia loves. She's obsessed with Elsa. Yeah. She is also obsessed with My Little Ponies and has requested, she's made a special custom request for a Princess Luna hat. So we looked at pictures together and she chose what she wanted and um, her best friend in school also wants one so I have to make two Princess Luna hats. So yeah, it's a thing. She's obsessed, obsessed with My Little Ponies. Me on the other hand, not so much. I can't stand them actually. I used to like them but I, I don't like the, the new show. Anyway, again, this is not about My Little Pony. This is about knitting. So yeah, there's my Nadia sock. I'm kind of losing steam on it, but you know me, I will definitely finish my socks. So those are my two whips that you've seen before. And um, oh, here's another one you've seen before because I haven't, have I started the second one? No, I haven't. So I did this test knit, I think it's called The Farmer's Daughter, yes, by um, Mallory from the Knit and Kitten podcast. She is a friend of mine and she lives in Canada also. And... Um, I love the yarn, I love the pattern, but this yarn does not go with this pattern because you can't see it, but the pattern on the, it, she does the pattern on the front and it's like wavy, and it's really pretty. I'm actually going to knit them again in another yarn. I'm not going to undo this one, obviously, because it's, it's still a gorgeous, a gorgeous sock. And when it's on your foot, it's kind of lacy on the front, so you can actually see the the knitting the lace work a little bit better but I am gonna start the second one soon so I will have that second pairs that second sock I hate having just one sock and um, this is my ball <laughs> yeah I have this problem with my cakes they do that I don't know even if I work from the outside I don't know what's going on but yeah I am going to finish that soon <clears throat> and actually I didn't talk about this I don't think when I showed these socks before but this is the first time I did an afterthought heel 
and it was really cool. I don't, I think there's like a few different methods, so I'm not 100% familiar with it, but I really, really love it. It was so easy, because you do the waste yarn, so you, I, I didn't have to cut into anything. That's how I did it. That's what her instructions were. So I'm gonna finish that soon. And yeah, I'm gonna take some coffee because my throat really hurts. That's not gonna help it, but I just want coffee. Sorry, I hate when people sip or drink or eat in front of other people. I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing it. I just really want my coffee. I don't want it to get cold. Um, another work in progress is something I started that you did not see on hello <laughs> on my last podcast because um I didn't start it yet do I even make sense today I oh I'm just getting some love here <laughs> hello someone's happy hello Henry um I really have no business starting something new when I have a few things I really need to get off the needles or finished or frogged and then restarted but this is a project that was intentional. I intentionally bought the yarn for it back in, don't lick my hand. I intentionally bought the yarn for it back in um, October at the Woodstock Fleece Fiber Festival. Anyway, it's the Ohm Shawl by Andrea Maori. And I heard about it on Shauna's podcast from Adelaide Cottage. <clears throat> and I'm in the middle of a row, of course, because why not? And what in the world? Why would I do that? Why would I do that? That is actually really frustrating. So this shawl, it was such, it's such a great shawl. It's in, um, it's knit in worsted weight. Yes. Yes. Worsted weight. And I use cascade yarns and they don't have the ones I bought. They don't have, they're all, the colors are numbers. So I, I renamed all of them. So these are the colors that I use and they're all cascade heritage I believe this is paprika because that's what it looks like this is mustard um, this is lime green this is eggplant and this is oatmeal it's very culinary <laughs> um, <clears throat> so here's the shawl and it is well I'll show it to you first then I'll talk about it it is Gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> Look at that. Love it. It is mid row, of course, so it's hard to kind of show. So this is where I am right now. I'm not actually adding buttonholes on it because there's like 19 buttons. I did not know there were 19 buttons. I have to buy 19 buttons. Yeah, which means I have to sew on <laughs> 19 freaking buttons. Buttons. I'm not a button person. I never sew them on. Hopefully this gets them on. This, this gets sewn on. But anyway, so these three, four strips are done in color, I mean, um, in solids, but there's, um, you can see there's patterns knit into it, except you can't see the eggplant one. It's like a zigzag pattern. And then this is color work, obviously, which I don't do much, and I don't think I've ever done it worked flat, but here, I'll hold it up while I talk about it. Um, but, and I don't love color work. I don't love it, but oh my goodness, look at it when I just got a message on my phone. Okay. Um, look at it from far away. I, it's unbelievable. Sorry, getting messages on my phone. I should have put it in airplane mode. I love the way it looks. Um, it's so gorgeous. And I know that it is a little bit tighter and I tried to loosen my gauge a little bit as I knit the um the color work section but it is tight so this one is definitely being blocked out because it's all crazy and wonky looking right now but I have faith that's gonna look amazing and it's this big ass shawl it's huge and it's like this wrap that you can wear like 10 different ways and I am like just head over heels in love with it and it's it actually knits up really fast because it's on 10.5 us 10.5 needles I think that's 6.5 millimeter Sorry, 6.5 millimeter, US 10.5, and worst of weight, so it's huge. I don't like working with large needles. It actually hurts my hands. 
it's really weird it, and it's I can't knit as fast but I love the shawl and um, hopefully that will be done for the next podcast so then oh, okay so if you watch the Mean Girls knits, then you'll know about this, or actually they didn't mention it in their last podcast, but they're, um, hi Rebecca and Stephanie, <laughs> I think they watch me, and I love them, they're so amazing, they're my favorites. Um, they, so I follow them on Instagram, and they started a hashtag, started at the bottom, Cal, I think that it's, that's what it's called, and it's basically using up your, um, I want to say red, red heart, but like acrylic yarns because we all did it well not all of us but I did I start I used acrylic yarns for the longest time and you know what spoiler alert I still do sometimes it's great and um, yeah so I am participating in that however they probably don't know that <laughs> and I'm actually I was at a, um, a little workshop with my sister-in-law and her mom and her sister a few weeks ago and it was at this cute little blueberry farm and this rustic little building inside we did this workshop on how to make candles these candles whatever and she had this the lady that owns it knits and I was commenting on her knits and she was commenting on my socks because they looked just like some socks that she was knitting and had for sale and then she had some blankets by the fireplace and I was kind of looking at them and they're just so cozy and like cabiny and just wintery and cozy blankets so it was basically like these squares and it had a border, like a brown border around all of them, but it could just be like a, um, like a, just using scrap yarns. So I figured, ooh, for the started at the bottom cow, I think that's what I'm gonna do is use my scrap acrylic yarns, which I have a lot of still, and I'm gonna make squares and then put them into, make them into a blanket. So far, I only have two, and I think this is the front of it. Yeah, this is the front of it. And it's kind of like a seed stitch, but not really. <clears throat> and then, this is another one. See, they're obviously scraps. It's not going to be a matchy blanket. It's not going to be gorgeous, but it's going to be cozy and really awesome. So I have those two. Those are part of my started at the bottom cal. So check that out on Instagram. I think it's an Instagram only knit along. So if you have like your old cropped acrylic yarn stash still hanging around, use it. Why not? I mean, you don't have to make a blanket. Everybody's making different things, but it's a great way. I always want to get rid of my acrylic yarns, and I always have more. Because um, I knit, like, hats or crochet hats or something, um, stuff like that. And uh, you want to use acrylic yarns sometimes. You don't want to use the really um, quality, the good quality yarns. So that is that. Um, I am doing that. And my Speckle and Pop is on the horizon. I am going to finish it working up to it, psyching myself up to it. I have to find my notes. Um, actually, I do know where they are, but I just have to get all that crap together and just finish that stupid shawl, which will give me back a pair of needles. It'll give me some scrap yarn, and it will also give me back about 535 stitch markers. Who knew I had that many? Not really, but um, yeah, I had to even buy new stitch markers for that project, and I really want them, and they're all on that project. So, and I'm also itching to cast on socks, but I really don't have any business casting on any socks right now because I really want to finish all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm getting a little clogged up here. Um, and I also need to frog my Rizzo blouse, which I showed you. It's that pink one um, because I'm going to restart it. And she did come out with some uh, corrections in the pattern. So that's, uh, that's been updated. And so I'll redo that. And my Comfort Fade Cardi, that is also on the horizon of being frogged. And I'm going to over dye that yarn, and then I'm going to probably knit that sweater again in a larger size because I want it a little bit cozier, I guess. Maybe I'll do a, a gauge swatch. Imagine that. I never do that. I feel like I'm not really finishing my thoughts today, and I'm really sorry. I've been sick. I never get sick and when I do get sick I'm such a baby and it hurts my throat hurts so bad my daughter just is bringing germs home from school because it's her first year of kindergarten and it's pretty awful so I've been I've just had this sore throat for like a week and I feel like I have a lump on my throat it's awful so I don't feel great usually it doesn't hang around this long but I don't know so I was I really didn't want to make this podcast too long and I'm already at 20 minutes I think so 
but I, I did, I did, I've sold some of my yarn from my, from my Etsy shop, which all the information in, of how to get in touch with me is going to be below. So I have two Instagrams and one of them is for my Etsy shop. And I also have an Etsy shop. It's Sorella Knit Co. And I'm selling, right now I'm selling hand dyed yarn, but I'm also going to be selling patterns and then finished projects, which are, you, right now they're toques and I think I'm going to add some uh, mitts in there because I've had quite a few requests for like fingerless mitts. Yeah. So um, my mom bought a scan of my arm because that's what moms do. <laughs> and she had a question. She w wondered what to do with one skein of yarn. And my go-to is always a pair of socks, but sometimes that gets a little boring. Um, everybody does shawls. So I didn't really know what to tell her. So what did I do? I went onto the Google and I asked Siri what I could make with um, one skein of yarn, uh, fingering weight yarn. So there were quite a few things that came up and one in particular I just pinned and I thought I would share a few suggestions with you. They had quite a few suggestions in the list but I just picked out the ones that were the most interesting to me. So the first one is, and I'm not big on scarves, I don't ever knit scarves, but I thought this was kind of nice. I figured some people might like scarves so I would share this. So the first one is The Favorite Scarf Ever by Lisa Bruce and I like this. Hopefully I can get this up to you quickly. I like this because of the zigzag look on it. I thought that was really cute and it would really show off the yarn. So there's that. And then there is the one called, for somebody who doesn't like scarves, I actually picked out two. I mean, I like scarves, I just don't wanna knit them. This is called Carrie's Chevron Scarf by Carrie Jared. And again, I think it would show off the, um, the yarn really nice and it's kind of like a, a feather and fan? Is that what it is? I think. There's that. So then we're into shawls. <clears throat> the Feather Shawl by Robbie Laughlin, and I'll show you both pictures. I thought that looked kind of nice, and that would showcase how it would really sh um, show the yarn really nice. Then there is, is this a shawl? Yeah, Dandelion Air <clears throat> by Lizzie Harrison. And here's a couple pictures of it. So I thought that would be another nice one. They're kind of similar, of course. And f there were a few cowls actually. Again, I'm not a big fan of cowls either, but it's not, they weren't terrible. I mean, none of them are terrible. This is Co-Pilot by Dominique Trad. I thought that was kind of nice also. There's the sock head cowl also which I didn't even know existed but it does that's really cool I actually heard about it I I want to say that Molly from a homespun house showed it recently she was knitting it and I was like there's a sock head cowl that's crazy of course there is I also liked the Irish mesh cowl oh the sock head cowl is by Kelly McClure this is the Irish mesh cowl by Joe Strong. That's pretty nice. But this one's really cool if you like that Celtic cable look, which I do. It's called Nenier. Nenier by Lucy Hag. And then there were hats. There's always hats. There's the Barley, barley Light Hat by Tin Can Knits. I'm not even going to show that. Sometimes hat by Vera Swanson and I like this one because it's slouchy and it has a little pattern on it I'm a big fan of slouchy hats So the spatter dash wrist warmers, oh my goodness, I am making these I love these I love those So yeah, those are the spatter dash wrist warmers by Dagmar Mora Is the wannabe vintage mitts by Jennifer B. Let's get a good picture of them so pretty those are really pretty baby knits are always so cute there's the flax light sweater by Tim can knits so for the smaller sizes uh, the first two sizes we'll use just one single skein so that's always a great sweater to knit for your baby or a friend or a relative who's having a baby and they're so cute so uh, this one stood out to me the sunny side by Tannis Lavalley Oh, baby sweaters are so cute and they knit up so fast. 
there's the here's another good one stay on baby booties by knit girl's mother so those are great of course you can use way less than a single skinny yarn for those and then little accessories you can make like a sleeve for your bullet journal or notebook or journal or maybe even like an ipad um you can make mug cozies um there's a lot of things you can do with one skins anyway those were my suggestions um instead of just socks not that there's anything wrong with socks because you know me and socks and I was going to have a look through my yarn bin. Um, I did bring it out here because I organized all my yarn. I, I decided it was time to get them in bins and organize them because I got new um, labeling tape for my Dymo labeler. You know, those little things that print out labels. I love that. Um, so I got bins and we've just been doing some stuff in the, in the RV here, <laughs> kind of organizing it and pimping it out a little bit. Um, but anyway, I went through my yarn, I'm looking at it right now, and I just kind of divided stuff and organized stuff. And I did want to share my yarn with you, but I think I'm going to wait for another episode because this episode is getting long and my coffee's getting cold. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm going to wait another time because I got some really cool stuff to show you. I thought it'd be fun to share some of my stash with you. You know, I don't really, I don't often enhance my stash. I hope that doesn't bother you. That is the heat that just came on. I'm not off, I'm not a big shopper as far as like building on my stash because I just don't want to. I don't have the room for it and I'd really like to use up the stuff that I have. So I thought it'd be fun to just go through what I do have. And yeah, I'll do that another time. But I actually had a question. So all my circular needles are organized. There's yarn in there and it looks like a hot mess. This is how they're organized. <laughs> Actually, there's a couple things in there that don't belong in there, like scissors and uh, yarn labels. But yes, th these are my circular needles, plus my chiagus, which is still not a complete set. I need to get the larger sizes too, to complete that, because I'm really loving these needles, actually. Love them, and I need some more cables. I need a smaller cable to, for, to make a 16 inch circular and then a, maybe a larger cable too, but yeah, I still have to complete this set, and needles are falling out everywhere. But I do, I know I, I was kind of iffy about my Chiagos, love this set, love it. I, I feel happy knitting with them now. They're just the right amount of sharpness. Everybody, well, I don't know that everybody loves Chiagos, but I definitely recommend them, and I'm glad for the people that did recommend them to me. But anyway, these are my other needles. Some of them are like the old, <laughs> The bamboos that I'm not really interested in getting rid of but I'm not interested in using them either anyway but I was wondering do you have any idea of um, needle organizers what how do you organize your needles I also have this which is about 100 years old not really it's probably I've probably had it about 10 or no more than 10 years maybe 15 years 12 years let's go with 12 and it's um, one of these roll things. It, you roll it up. I have a 16 pound cat on my lap and my feet are falling asleep. I wish you could see this. He's just huge. Anyway, this rolls up and you tie it like that. I got on Etsy like uh, 12 years ago. We're going with 12 years, but it unrolls. And then my double pointed are in there, which I really don't use that much because I don't, I'm not a big fan of double pointed. Oh, Henry, don't play with the string. Hey. Ouch, he just scratched me. And I have um, hooks in there. Look at it. <laughs> and these, which I never use straight needles. I can't even tell you the last time I used straight needles, but I have them. They're old. <laughs> so I don't know how to, I don't know, I wanna get something that I can organize my needles with. Double pointed circulars, probably more so circulars. Something that is neat and organized. I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, please comment below or um, send me a message on Instagram or email me or whatever. Just text me. You don't have my phone number. Basically, all of that is texting me because it comes to my phone. <sighs> Tell me what to do with my needles because they're in a Ziploc bag. It's not even a Ziploc bag. It's like a dollar store Ziploc bag. I don't know what to do with them. 
And I wanted to talk about one thing. So what is up with the thumbs down on knitting podcasts? I'll watch, and it's probably more for the more popular ones. I watch a lot of YouTubers, um, not all knitters, um, other podcasts and stuff. Tutorials, whatever. And they're more likely to get thumbs down and people leave negative comments. And people don't usually leave negative comments on knitting podcasts or yarn fiber podcasts. I can't imagine why they would. But if you're going to thumbs down it, just walk away. <laughs> like, why? Knitters are like the nicest people in the world. They're so giving. They're so sweet. They're so um, quick to help and <laughs> like... They're there for you. They're, you don't even know them. They're like halfway across the world or halfway across the country or in another country or whatever. And they'll be there for you. Trust me, they will be. Um, I've made some really great friendships with some knitters um, just because of the whole knitting thing. Anyway, why thumbs down a podcast? I don't understand it. This has been bothering me. I've been wanting to talk about this for the longest time. I don't get it. Like, thumbs up, great. I think it gives you a little bit more exposure if you, if you, um, Oh, sorry playing with my hair if you do a thumbs up I think it gives you the that podcaster a little bit more exposure but don't thumbs down it walk away just go like it can't be from another knitter that's gonna thumbs down it I've come across knitting podcasts that I'm like okay but I'll either finish it and just give them the benefit of the doubt and they always have something else to share and I still like them anyway it's just you know whatever or I just move on to the next one there's plenty of knitting podcasts out there don't thumbs down it. I don't get it. As I get like, well, not that I have a lot of people watching, but as I get like a bunch of thumbs down on this video. Anyway, it was kind of a pet, it's kind of a pet peeve. Like, I don't understand why that would happen. I'm going to stop talking about that. I just wanted to show you, I got my business cards. They are Vistaprint. Um, I, I used to be a graphic designer way back a million years ago, so it's kind of stuck with me on printing and designing and getting everything centered and everything so Vistaprint's not my favorite but everybody uses it and um, they do the job but these are I finally got them I got them after I had already gotten some orders so unfortunately these did not go out with my orders but it's, it's not focusing there we go I think that's better anyway if, it, if it's not focusing I'm really sorry I'm not good at that but those are my business cards. They're okay. I designed that logo myself. I will eventually have somebody design it for me. If you know anybody, let me know. Um, and it doesn't have to be that. I kind of wanted like a retro look, but I'm happy with it. Yeah, I just wanted to share those with you. And yeah, I think that is it. I did win something in an Instagram uh, giveaway. I enter a lot of them. Um, I try not to tag too many people because I don't know if people like to be tagged in, on Instagram, but I don't always enter them, but I do enter a lot of, of giveaways. And I thought it would be really fun to, to win something, and I never win anything. And I actually won from somebody who's, who doesn't live too far from me. They're actually kind of a neighbor. So um, I won a 25 gram mini from her, and I have not gotten it in the mail yet, so I can't wait to see it. I told her to surprise me, um, and she's local to me which is really great. Um, and what did I, oh, it was a name. Oh yeah, I didn't have to tag anybody in this. I don't even know who, who the dyer is. I wanna say Crooked Kitchen Yarn. I think that's it. <laughs> and she's great, check her out on Instagram. But anyway, the contest was name this um, new colorway. And I named it Mixology, and that was the, my suggestion, and she took it. Um, I don't know if it was because she liked it or it, it was just random or whatever. I have no idea, but um, yeah, so I won. I won. I never win. That was super exciting. And I am going to wrap this up now because I am at 36 minutes, and hopefully I can edit some of that out. And um, yeah, I have to make my, I have to wake up my legs because this cat is on my lap, you should see. I would show it to you, but there's like a huge mess around me of knitting and stuff. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> enough. I will hopefully be back next week, and um, thank you for watching and hanging out with me and spending time with me, and 
have fun knitting and stuff. Bye.